whoever invented eyeglasses should have got a bonus that day. <laughs> you heard how the Lord spoke to the people of Israel through his prophet Moses. And again, this is what he said. Hear now, O Israel, the decrees and laws I am about to teach you. Follow them so that you may live and go in and take possession of the land that the Lord, the God of your fathers, is giving you. Do not add to what I command you. Do not subtract from it. But keep the commands of the Lord your God that I give you. So far, the holy word of God for today. Hear, O Israel, the decrees and laws I am about to teach you. Hear, O Israel, the decrees and laws I declare in your hearing today. He said again in chapter 5, Hear, O Israel, and be careful to obey so that it may go well with you. He said again in chapter 6, of Deuteronomy. Hear, O Israel, you are now about to cross the Jordan and go in and dispossess nations greater and stronger than you. He said in chapter 9, Hear, O Israel, today you are going into battle against your enemies. Do not be faint-hearted or afraid of them. And finally, in chapter 27, be silent, O Israel, and listen. You have now become the people of the Lord your God. Obey, and obey the commands and decrees that I give you today. Maybe by now you too are sick of this phrase. <laughs> Maybe the people of Israel felt the same way. And yet God uses this phrase six times times in Deuteronomy alone when he wanted to get his people's attention and he wanted to summon them and give them instructions as to their next actions and empower them for his work here on earth. As I just mentioned to our children just now, you know, it's the same thing for us. If we want to have an idea where God wants us or is leading us, then it helps obviously to hear what he has to say. And these summonses are not just to give them the law, as in the outward behaviors he expects through his commandments, but also the gospel of God for faith in his promises to love and bless and forgive the people as well. Again, these sentiments can be heard in Deuteronomy chapter 6, 26, 28, and 30, as well as many times throughout the scriptures. Do you know how many times the concept of do not be afraid in various ways and phrases, do you know how often that concept is found in the scriptures? Someone not too long ago counted up 365 times. Isn't that cool? Now, when God calls on his people to hear, the Holy Spirit also enables them to do, to do so with understanding and faith. As the Apostle Paul says in Romans chapter 10, faith comes from hearing the, the word. And the word is heard through the word of Christ. Now, why does God want to get his people's attention? Well, it's the same thing as, you know, when one of our Sunday school teachers wants to get the children's attention, it's because he or she is about to do what? To teach. Teach something important. Same is true of God. He's about to teach his people the law and rules they are to live by. And also the benefit if they follow them. In this case, specifically, the people will go on and they will possess that the land that the Lord has set aside for them. 
Now, is this land of Israel something that they have earned by their good works and their obedience? No. The land they will take possession of is land that God will give them. It's not earned. It's a completely undeserved gift. And the promised land of the Israelites at the time of Moses, in a not so coincidental way, is like a paradigm of the gift for you and me. Sort of a model, if you will. Why? Because through faith in Jesus, who, as we know, obeyed his Father's will and paid the price for our promised land, the greatest land deal of all ages, is our place in heaven someday. And it was paid for in full, as we know. One death instead of billions of deaths, and one sacrifice of God so that the promised land could be given to billions of his children, so that we may live in heavenly bliss forever, all through faith in the one true God, Father, his Son, and the ever-present Holy Spirit. This is the most basic teaching of the Christian faith. This is the most basic gospel truth. Apart from it, you, as we all know, cannot enter the promised land of God. And yet, believe it or not, many, many people in America are confused or don't care one bit about this. They are blinded by Satan. Do you know what the most popular religion is in America today? Now, most of us would probably say, well, we are a Christian nation. We have been since the pilgrims arrived. But according to actual survey statistics from the George Barna organization, the biggest religion in America right now is the pick and choose religion. We might call it a buffet lunch of different religions in order to fashion a spirituality that suits our own taste. Again, in America, according to a recent survey, in this case by the Gallup poll, religion has become a bit of a dirty word. It sounds dead. It sounds old-fashioned. It sounds archaic. And ironically, today, it sounds prejudicial. Spirituality, on the other hand, is a safer word today. If you can say you are spiritual, you don't have to make a commitment. And so for a lot of people, it's a way out, God forbid, a way out of the promised land. <clears throat> And yet, we sinful people, let's get back to reality as well, always desiring to satisfy our own world view of how things ought to be, we still do this all the time. We satisfy our own personal longings, often at the expense of what God has to say. But let me give you an example of how we might possibly have a slightly distorted lens, if you will, on the scriptures. We embrace the biblical teaching that Jesus is the divine and only Son of God, being both 100% God and 100% man. Mary was certainly his human mother. But we might think that he really didn't suffer on the cross to the degree that we would have if those nails had been placed in our palms and feet. Since Jesus is God, he really wasn't as human as we are and really didn't suffer to the extent, same extent. But this is absolutely not true. He was both God and man, but a man who never sinned because God is his father and because he himself is God. But he felt every nerve in his body, body firing hard on that horrific Friday. And even worse, 
because he experienced the spiritual pain that went along with it. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Quote, unquote. Let me read further in Deuteronomy chapter 4, this time from verses 19 through 21. God says, when you look up to the sky and see the sun, the moon, and the stars. Last night I went out in my backyard and looked up and saw the beautiful stars, and it was just so incredible. When you look at all the heavenly array, however, do not be enticed into bowing down to them and worshiping the things the Lord your God has apportioned to all the nations under heaven. Quote, unquote. What do you suppose God is warning against in this case? Anybody want to venture the word? Worshiping the stars and the planets? I think I heard it. Astrology. Stay away from that stuff. It's a command of God. Worship the creator, not the created things or people. <sighs> Sometimes pick and choose might hold to God creating the world, but hold to the outlook of Charles Darwin, for example, that evolution produced all the animals and that perhaps apes really are our ancestors. You know, if apes are our ancestors, where did apes come from? Trust me, scientists don't know. Even worse, that man somehow, is, as the end product, fully determines his own destiny by what he does or doesn't do in this life. Very new age, very Hinduistic. We may even believe that after death, people do come back in another person's body. The basic teaching of Hinduism. Again, very new age, etc., but very wrong according to the words of the one true God. Pick and choose religion may suggest that there are many paths to God and to heaven. For example, meditation techniques or the more popular notion that all good people go to heaven. You know, sincerity in one's religion is all that matters. He takes all sincere, good people, whether they're Christian or Muslim or Buddhists, or, you know, all alike, just be as good as you can. Actually, what God likes is repentant sinners even better, who then look to Jesus Christ as their Savior. The Bible is very clear that no amount of sincere good works will get you an inch closer to God and his promised land. Why? Because as you know, all people on the earth are sinners. You and I, friends, are sinners, and we are saved only by God's grace through faith in the atoning sacrifice of his son Jesus, the one and only true God among the world's false gods. He has saved his people. And by faith we are saved. Here's another question. <clears throat> We're getting towards the end here. Are we free to pick and choose what passages of the Bible that we will believe and which passages we will reject? God said there should be no sexual union outside of marriage. Marriage should be honored by all, and the marriage bed is to be kept pure. Hebrews chapter 13. But how many couples keep this today? I recently read that over 90% of all couples had illicit union before marriage. I won't go into detail. 
Paul also says, the Apostle Paul says in Ephesians chapter 5, Wives, submit to your husbands as to the Lord. Three verses for the wife. And husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. Eight verses, interestingly, almost three times as many for the husband in terms of loving his wife. Now, guys, do you know the key to a happy marriage? Two words. <laughs> yes, dear. <laughs> yes, dear. But I heard some other good ones, too. Now, note... Nowhere in the Bible does God say, wives, love your wives, or husbands, love your husbands. Quite the contrary, there are many references in the Old and New Testaments as to how God feels about LGBT activity, and none of it is approved or endorsed by God. He is very clear about this subject. There, I've said it. Now regarding the gospel, thankfully, despite our shameful editing of God's word to our choosing, God doesn't edit or change his promise to us. In fact, despite our unreliability and unworthiness, he still promises to forgive us our sins for Jesus' sake. Even now, these 2,000 plus years, Jesus died for us as much as he did for Peter, James, and John. And I must add also for his own mother Mary, who was not perfect. Do you know the last words of, of Mary in the scriptures, the mother of Jesus? The very last words recorded in Scripture, I don't care what version of the Bible you look in. The very last words recorded in Scripture of Mary, the mother of our Lord Jesus, the mother of God, appeared in the time of Jesus' first miracle, the wedding at Cana, where he turned water into wine. Mary said to the attendants, do whatever he tells you, unquote. Isn't that interesting? It's like she was naturally passing the baton on to her son Jesus, and rightfully so. All who turn to the one true God in repentant faith will be saved and have their place in the promised land of heaven, reserved and paid for in full. And finally, the question for us here today, I'm wrapping up. Do we truly want what God offers? His forgiveness and transformation. By the power of the Holy Spirit, you and I are not the same as we once were as when we first came into this world. Baptized into, a, into Christ, we are to listen to him. And that's why we take this opportunity to remember the Sabbath and keep it holy to learn from him, practice Christian living, and empowered by him be his ambassadors into the world. And particularly here in the United States, which is increasingly and very rapidly becoming a godless and Christian persecuting nation. We need to stand our ground, push back, if you will, with the true word of God with the benefit of sharing how much God loves each and every one of us to the extent that he sacrificed his own son in order to save us. Hear now, O Israel, the decrees and laws I am about to teach you. Follow them so that you may live and go in and take possession of the land that the Lord, the God of your fathers, is giving you. Do not add 
to what I command you. Do not subtract from it, but keep the commands of the Lord your God that I give you. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verses 1 to 2. Thank you, Lord. And to God alone goes all the glory in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen. At this time.